Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to start with looking at factoring. But with factoring, the first step is to always factor out and find the greatest common factor, or the GCF, first. Doesn't matter how many terms there are, doesn't matter what the case is, you always, always, always look for a GCF first. Now, here's the way that we do that. When we find the GCF, what we're going to do is we're going to take and factor it out. We're going to put it outside of parentheses. And then inside of parentheses, now this is important, and it's referred to in the asterisk here, that the number of terms is not going to change. If we originally, if you start out with three terms, when we factor out the GCF, in parentheses, you're still going to have three terms. If we started out with five terms, and we have a GCF that we factor out, well, you're still going to have five terms in parentheses there. That's very important. For example, let's look at this first one here, where we have 5x plus 5. Now, there's going to be times where the GCF is just a number. There's going to be times where the GCF is just a variable. And there's going to be other times where it's both a number and a variable. Now, for this one, 5x plus 5, the greatest common factor in this case would just be the 5. Now, essentially, now, and since there's two terms here, we're going to have two terms in parentheses. Now, essentially, what we're doing every time we factor something out is we're dividing. We're basically doing the opposite of the distributive property. So remember, with the distributive property, we'd be multiplying everything in parentheses by 5. So here, since I'm doing it in reverse, I'm going to divide each of these uh, terms by 5. So when I take 5x and divide that by 5, I'm left with just 1x, or just x. When I take 5 divided by 5, it's not that I'm factoring out 5, so I'm not left with anything. That is why I emphasize the fact that since we have two terms, we're going to have two terms in parentheses, is because of situations like this. So when I factor out a 5, it's not that we're left with nothing. It's that 5 divided by 5 is 1. So in other words, once we factor out our GCF, you should always be able to distribute the GCF through and still get your original uh, polynomial, which would happen here, because 5 times x is 5x, and 5 times 1 is 5. Let's look at the next example. The next example, I have x to the fourth plus x squared plus 3x. Now, again, like I said, sometimes we f our GCF is a number. Sometimes it's just a variable. Sometimes it's both a number and a variable. In this scenario, it's going to be just a variable because when I, look at the when I look at the numbers, I have a 1x to the fourth, a 1x squared, and a 3x. So I don't have a common factor outside of other than a 1 that I can factor out. So now I look at the variables. Here I have x to the fourth, x squared, and an x. So with those, the largest, uh, what we do is we look at the largest exponent for that variable that they have in common. The largest one is just the x to the first. So I'm going to factor out x to the first. When I do that, if I had x to the fourth and I factor out an x, I'm left with x cubed. If I have an x squared and I factor out an x, I'm left with just x. If I have a 3x and I factor out an x, I'm left with just 3. There's nothing more that I can factor out of that, so I know that this is complete. I have x cubed plus x plus 3 in parentheses there. Now let's look at this next one. This next one is 9d squared minus 3de minus 6d cubed. So let's start by looking at the numbers, the 9, the 3, the 6. The greatest common factor between those is 3. That means that the largest number that divides evenly into each of those is 3. Now I look at the variables. The largest exponent that they have in common, the largest variable with an exponent that they all have in common is just a d. So I factor out a 3d. Now let's start with that first term. 9d squared. Well, now when I factor out a 3 from 9d squared, well, 9 divided by 3 is just 3. When I factor out a d from the d squared, I'm left with just d. Let's go to the next term. Well, 3 divided by 3 is 1. Factor out a d, and that is also gone. Factor out since I factored out uh, d, there's just the e left over. So I'd have 3d minus e, or minus 1e, if you want to put the 1 in. Next, 6 divided by 3 is 2. Factor out a d from d cubed, I'm left with d squared. And when I look in the parentheses there, there's nothing more I can factor out, so I know I have found and uh, factored out the greatest common factor. So that is my answer. So I want you guys to try this last one on your own. So I want you to look for the greatest common factor here and factor that out. So why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, let's see how you did here. You should have recognized that the largest uh, number that goes into both 9 and 3 is just 3. 
between the m cubed and m squared, the largest m that they have in common is m squared. And between the n and the n squared, the largest n they have in common is just a plain old n. So we factor out a 3m squared n. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. Factor out an m squared from m cubed, that leaves us with m. Factor out an n from the n, that leaves us with no other n's left over there for that first term. So we have 3m for the first term. The second term, 3 divided by 3 is 1. We factored out an m squared. We factor out an n from the n squared, leaves us with just n. So our answer is 3m squared n times the quantity 3m minus n. Well, that's where we're going to end this video. So this video, this first part of this video, we're just going to be looking at how to find the greatest common factor. In the next video, you're going to want to watch how to find the difference of squares. And we're going to follow that up and end by looking at uh, perfect square trinomials. So with that, we'll end this video. So make sure you watch the next video to see how to factor differences of squares.